Welcome to the Catbird Quilts. I'm Kathy Martin. Today, I want to share with you how I pick great quilt patterns for men's dress shirts. And I have some examples to show you. And of course, I have a lot to say about it. Before we get started, I'm wearing a black shirt again. And I just had breakfast before we started filming again. So I'm going to stop and check and make sure that maybe this time I don't have crumbs on my shirt like I did in the on my sewing table <laughs> that we did a couple of weeks ago. <laughs> One of you should have told me. <laughs> so great quilt patterns, not good quilt patterns, great quilt patterns for men's dress shirts are a thing in my opinion. Well, this whole thing is my opinion. So welcome <laughs> to my opinion. Some people would say that any quilt pattern can be a great quilt pattern for shirts. But in my experience, I want to follow a pattern and not have to do a lot of extra work just to make it work. And so what I want to share with you today is some of the things that I've learned working almost exclusively, not exclusively, but almost exclusively with shirts and using shirts makes some of its own work. So let's not add to it with a difficult pattern. There are some practical considerations really for any quilt pattern, but definitely for quilt patterns that you intend to use shirt fabrics with. And so we're going to start with those. And the first of them is the fabric requirements. I always start there because if you are using shirts, whether you're a memory quilt maker and you use shirts for to make those quilts, or if you're like me and you just love going to the thrift store and have started quilting with shirt fabrics, you have a limited number of shirts and you have a limited amount of fabric within one shirt. And so the starting place is, I see this gorgeous quilt pattern. Will there be enough in my shirt to make this quilt work? And unlike yardage, I've said it a thousand times, I'll say it again, you can't order more. You can't go back to the fabric store and just get more of it. What you have is what you have. If the quilt pattern calls for more than a yard of one color, depending on the size of your shirt, it might be a stretch. Now, I've had some 4XL shirts. I promise you it felt like three yards of fabric. It's not. P.S. It's not. But it felt like it. But Generally speaking, a large or larger shirt is going to give you roughly a yard of fabric. So if your pattern calls for more than a yard of fabric, it's not going to work. I've tried to make it work with other patterns like, oh, I'll use similar shirt colors, but sometimes that doesn't work. And let me show you what I mean. I saw this gorgeous quilt called the Blizzard Quilt by Kate Spain on Instagram and instantly fell in love with it. And I just, oh, I loved it. I love it still, actually. I knew I couldn't do the whole quilt with one shirt, but I thought, well, if I get several similar gray shirts or if I get several similar, similar light blue shirts, I might be able to make it work. So I made a test block and I've actually talked about this on a previous video. This is one block of the blizzard quilt. It is huge. Look at that. Good Lord. So it uses a lot of fabric and the way it's designed, she did it as a flip and trim. So there's a lot of waste. I used over half a single shirt to make the test block. And I used the sage because it was a shirt I didn't really love love, so I just made it as an as a as a test block. And I got this far and was like, there are nine blocks in that quilt. I would have to have nine close to nine shirts to make it work. And then there's so much waste. And for those of you that make memory quilts, you know, you do not have 
a wide range often of shirts, you really, really have a limited supply of shirts. So it becomes really important that you understand the fabric requirements and how much fabric is in your shirt before you get started on a quilt pattern. When I saw the original quilt, I didn't have a sense of the scale, which sometimes happens when you see a quilt pattern on Instagram or on YouTube. It's beautiful, but you don't realize maybe how big the pieces are. If I had read the fabric requirements, I would have realized how much is required. Even though this is so beautiful and will make a gorgeous quilt, because I will be making this quilt, it's just not great for shirts, unless you make a modification, which you can do. And let me show you what that looks like. So I did a little modification and reduced the piece sizes and made them as half square triangles. And now this is a block that would be perfect for shirts, but I had to do a lot of work to get here. I had to do a lot of math <laughs> and had to do a lot of cutting. So this is an example of a beautiful quilt pattern that might not be a great quilt pattern unless you're willing to do the work to modify it. The next item in my evaluation of is, could this be a great quilt pattern is, do I have the type of fabric that works with the design of the quilt pattern? For this example, I wanna show you the Morning Walk quilt by Chelsea Stratton. I love this quilt. I bought this quilt pattern months and months ago without having this consideration. And I've gotten here and I'm like, well, shoot, this isn't great for shirts. And the reason is it's a log cabin block with multiple prints in the same color. That's what makes up the block. So that kind of looks like little windmills. You can see that. And so in the lilac block, there are four or five different prints in that same color. And the design of that whole quilt pattern is anchored around each of those log cabins having a grouping of similar colored fabrics. Fantastic if you're using Chelsea Stratton's fabric line, which is gorgeous, by the way. But if you're using shirts, I mean, if except for blue, I don't have six printed lilac shirts that I can use for one of those blocks, much less however many colors there are in the quilt. And you can see I have nothing to show you because I don't have an example. Now, I could make that in navy or light blue or probably gray, which that would be gorgeous. But to really achieve that look that she developed for that quilt pattern, you would have to have many, many shirts in the same color family and multiples of those to really make that work. So beautiful quilt pattern, probably still going to make it, probably not with shirts because it's just not great for shirts. And so you have to know what's in your stash and know if you have for example, multiple prints in the same color. So that is one that I learn, I've learned along the way. I can love it and the pieces may be small and it's not a high fa fabric requirement. It might be fat quarter friendly, but unless I have a whole lot of a similar color shirt, it's not gonna look like the quilt pattern designer planned it. Another consideration, not really specific to shirts, but just generally speaking, a good thing to think about when you're choosing quilt patterns is, does the quilt pattern match my skill level? Or if it doesn't, am I willing to take on a learning curve? So I jumped into my orange peel linen <laughs> quilt that has curved seams, had never done curved seams before. And I thought, how hard can it be? And the answer is it's, it's not very hard, <laughs> but there was a learning curve and I nearly abandoned the project at first until I developed that skill. And of course, how I developed that skill was doing many of them. Sometimes when you're considering making a quilt, you just don't want to work that hard. Like you don't want to tackle a whole new 
skill set, or you might be wanting just a really fun and easy quilt. So reviewing the pattern, usually it's in the front of the pattern, like on the first page, or if you're purchasing one online, it'll say my favorite confident beginner, or I love confident beginner. I think that I think that's me, really. (laughs) I'm going to get a shirt that just says confident beginner. I'm going to wear it all around town and people are going to be like, what? So it is a consideration. And again, not specific to shirts, but if you have not been using shirts and you take on a quilt pattern that's a little outside of your skill set, you may have the double whammy of working with shirts, which is a little bit more challenging and cutting, and then also learning, for example, curb seams or flying geese or, you know, an eight-pointed star or whatever. So just that's in there for me in the decision. And as I like to present great quilt patterns to you guys that I've tried and that have worked, in some ways, the easier, the better. So now let's talk about quilt sizes. So quilt sizes, I mean, that's a whole other video. Part of it is knowing what size quilt you want. And it's surprising. You would think that they would all be available in every size, but they're not. I had an experience where I wanted to make a baby quilt and I was looking through patterns and I found this pattern that is, well, what is and was, was and is. Words is hard. Gorgeous. And it's called the Metalark Quilt by Penelope Handmade. And I love this quilt. I probably will make another of these quilts. And I purchased the pattern, loved it, loved it, loved it, and then realized that the baby version of that quilt is not a scaled down version of the whole big quilt. It's just a center section. And what I loved about the quilt was the overall huge design. So I had the like, what I ended up doing was reducing the piece size to make the whole gigantic quilt just in miniature. And it's because I didn't know any better in the beginning. If I had realized I want to make a baby quilt, but I want this baby quilt to be this whole design, then when I pick the pattern, I've been like, oh, actually, that's not what I'm looking for. Another example of that, and I love this quilt, is the Adventureland quilt from Suzy Quilts. I think everybody that's a quilter just about has made this quilt. And it's so beautiful and so visually arresting. And it comes only one size. It is a 60 by 60 quilt. So if you want something that's a little longer or a little wider or smaller, too bad. Too bad, so sad. And it's a square quilt. So if you were looking to do a throw that's like my nap quilt that you can pull up to your chin and go over your feet. That's not the quilt. And again, that doesn't have anything to do with shirts, but it is a consideration. Every time we make a quilt, you have to think about what size quilts am I looking for? And will this quilt pattern be the size that I want? And is it adaptable? But then we come back to the do I want to do the work to adapt it? And for me, if I have to adapt it, it's probably not a great quilt pattern. So let's move on to the last of the practical considerations for great quilt patterns. And that is, is the pattern I'm considering suitable for the types of shirt fabrics that I have? And ask me how I know this. (laughs) How I know this is I love to work with linen. I love linen. And linen is not really great for half square triangles and half rectangle triangles, half rectangle triangles, HRTs. Is that what that is? That doesn't even, I guess it does make sense. Half rectangle triangles and maybe not even great for flying geese. Things that have linen on the bias because it has a lot of give, it can make piecing challenging. It's really not great for very intricate designs. Same for flannel. It's real stretchy often. It can be very flimsy and It really works beautifully with squares and rectangles, but anything that has very small points, it's 
kind of challenging to work with. A large part of deciding if a pattern is great for your shirts is what kind of shirts do you have? Do you have twill? Do you have Oxford? Do you have linen? Do you have chambray? Do you have all cotton? Do you have cotton poly? Do you have flannel? So all of those things factor in to, hey, I love this, but maybe this isn't so great for this quilt pattern. Let me show you what I mean with an example you've already seen. So this is linen and I made that blizzard quilt block. When I scaled it down, I decided to do it because I thought this would be a beautiful pairing. And I think it is, in fact, <laughs> a beautiful pairing. But if you were to look closely at some of these individual little half square triangles, you'll see that they are, and this has not been washed. So this is after starching and piecing. A lot of the pieces are kind of wonky for lack of a better word. They didn't come together on the point and it's because all of these are bias edges. Everywhere there's a diagonal is a bias edge. So there's a perfect example of one that didn't come together. There was one over here that I saw that the whole block is like, oh. <laughs> so if I had wanted this to be really nice, tight, clean lines with everything matching up nicely. Linen's probably not the way to go. So again, beautiful pairing of fabrics. Probably this was not the best fabric to use it with this quilt pattern, or this was probably not the best quilt pattern to use with these fabrics. So those are some of the practical considerations. You know, it's, it's, Seems obvious, but it's the sort of thing sometimes you jump in and then realize, oh, this is actually terrible <laughs> for this. Next, I want to talk about design features, and that's where I have a lot of examples to show you. So I started to say before I start, but Lord have mercy, I've long since started. When it comes to the design part, this is a very subjective <laughs> topic. There are quilt designs that are universally loved. There are some that one group of people is like, oh, that's gorgeous. And everybody else is like, mm -mm, and vice versa. So just know as we're talking about some of the design aspects of choosing a quilt pattern, some things may really matter to you and other things may not. And so you might be a person that gingham that doesn't match up is completely a non-issue. For others, it might be, I will not use gingham because I cannot get it to line up nicely. And I want to demonstrate that right here. I have this really funny shirt that I found that is, I can't get that piece off. There we go. This is the sleeve. It is pineapples in case you can't tell. And it's pineapples on tops of on top of stripes. I don't know what it is about this fabric. It just is a delight to me. And I used it in the disappearing four patch blocks that we made as the quilt along on Patreon. And we all made blocks and chipped in together. And then I set it all together and we made a collective quilt top. And as I was doing a video for Patreon where I was talking about the different types of fabric and how I would pair those block, I'm sorry, different types of blocks and how I would put those blocks together in the quilt top. I had this, a block with this pineapple fabric in it. The block on the video happened to be turned in an orientation where the pineapples were upside down, i.e. the green parts were pointing down instead of pointing up like they're supposed to be. One of the patrons commented that that pineapple block is upside down. Thankfully, I had not sewn the whole quilt top, quilt top together yet, so it was very easy to fix. But the funniest part about that is for as persnickety as I am about stripes and plaids, I had not even noticed. Like, truly, when she commented, I had to go back and watch my own video to see <laughs> what she was talking about. Obviously that stuck out for her, I was oblivious. And so from here forward, if you have a moment where I'm talking about something, you're like, oh, that wasn't bothering me at all. That's great. Or if you're like, oh God, I could not do 
That's great too. Everybody has their own experience and the visual appeal of something and what may or may not bother us is very, very subjective. So just keep that in mind as we move forward. The actual quilt construction, quilt block or row or whatever, the construction of the piecing of a quilt top can be very important with regard to shirts. And the reason for that is there are a lot of shirts that have a directional print and that pineapple shirt is the perfect example of what a directional print is. Um, that also includes stripes and some plaids. Actually, it includes all plaids, but it really just depends on how you put it in your in your quilt. What I have before me is a part of a block. This is not even the whole block. The blocks are big of Susie Quilts Fireside Quilt, which I have really been wanting to make for quite some time. I love the design of it. It's very modern. I have a friend who really likes a more modern looking quilt and I'm wanting to make her a quilt. And so I started with this navy and cream linen, which by the way, this was linen was probably not the right decision for this because of these long strips. But I got to thinking about it and I was like, this is a perfect example of how, what fabric you choose and what quilt pattern you choose depends on the construction. Let me show you. So here we have stripes. So this is a shirt. This is more linen. I have a lot of linen. I, I'm just going to confess. I made this block as an example of like what not to do. I will put stripes together and they will not come together harmoniously and it will drive me crazy. And I got to say, I got it together and I was like, oh, that's really pretty. <laughs> I really expected it to bother me pretty, pretty badly because I really would like for the stripes to come together um, in a mitered corner. But that's not the way this quilt construction is. This is courthouse steps. So you start with the centerpiece and you do these two strips. Then you add these two strips. Then you add these two strips and then these two strips and so on and so on. That reminds me of the, and she told two friends and she told two friends. What I mean by this is you can see these stripes not only aren't exact with each other, but they also kind of butt up against the stripe going the opposite way. Again, historically, I would really dislike this. <laughs> it just so happens that I think it's actually kind of interesting. And that may be something that you have to consider. I'm going to use a high contrast stripe. They're not coming together in a mitered corner. Is that going to bother me or not? I feel like it's important that I should stop and say, if you happen to be a new quilter and you've wondered why so many quilts are made with those little tiny florals, just little bitty flowers all everywhere, small print. It's because, first of all, you generally can't tell where the seams are in those sorts of fabrics. So if these were little teeny tiny roses all around this whole thing, you wouldn't be able to tell this is how this block is made. But also from a distance, very small prints read as a solid color. And it's one of the things that is very appealing to a lot of quilters because you have the interest of the print up close. And so it's interesting and it gives movement up close. And from a distance, it just reads as this kind of maybe pale pink or pale green. And so you get the benefit of up close is great and far away is great. When you have something that's a more starkly obvious print, so like a larger scale print, or in the case of shirts, a plaid or a stripe, you will be able to tell the construction of that block. And you can see it even from a distance. And so in this case, because it is these outward working rectangular strips, again, I thought I was going to hate it. I actually love it. Um, but it's a very straight, orderly print and a straight orderly block. If it were a different style, it might clash a little more. And I want to show you 
what I mean by that. In my next example, I'm going to use the Melody quilt, which I have been wanting to make this quilt for so, so long, and I just haven't landed on a colorway yet, um, but this is a perfect time. In this pattern, there is a construction element, and there is also a design element that impacts what sort of fabrics really work well for it. This is the basic block. You can see in the overall picture of the quilt that these come together and this little almost like an S that's kind of angular up close from a distance really looks like almost like a curved windmill. I have chosen a fabric which hopefully you can see it has a very subtle small print so that's almost tone on tone so up close it's a really interesting fabric from a distance this will just read you know, like a rose, and this is kind of a blush. So actually that looks kind of like makeup. <laughs> I'm back to the lipstick names and all that kind of stuff. So in fact, I'm pretty sure that is the color blush that I use. It might be. It's really a pretty design. Now I veered from the actual quilt pattern design a little bit because she put her dark fabrics as kind of, I'm going to call this the S as the S, but for demonstration purposes. So this is a really pretty combination. And again, up close, you see the print from a distance. It's just going to look like a, you know, medium pink. I happen to have a medium pink shirt that is a directional fabric. I hope immediately you are already seeing what I'm talking about. So this is made of half square triangles sewn together. And then the construction of it, actually that is the construction of it. <laughs> words, I'm struggling with words today. It comes together with a square. So the half square triangle meets up with a square in the center. And yeah, mm. My first thought was wrong. It's the security robot in Wally -E that sees the big splash of yellow paint in the middle of the corridor and looks at it and goes, wrong. wrong. To me, this doesn't look right. Now, some of you out there are like, I mean, that's not that big of a deal. And that's okay. For me, it it doesn't work because I did not really plan this. The half square triangles print doesn't line up. So you have this that's disjunct. And then I must have done that. This this doesn't match up either. I guess I could have turned that block. But it still would not have the design element of a cohesive and uniform looking S. What's my favorite ingredient in Pringles potato chips? Uniformity. It's not uniform. And because it's not uniform, if this were in a quilt, that particular part of the windmill looks, it loses the fluidity of that part of the design. I hope that makes sense. You can imagine if we had done this with the plaid, now this is going to clash horribly, but if this were the plaid that I used, it's not going to come together even with this much uniformity because it's an uneven plaid. And so some of the pieces would look like this and some of the pieces would look like this and it would look like it came from maybe even all different fabrics. In this particular quilt pattern, and because Erica Taylor from Kitchen Table Quilting is so great, she actually says in the beginning of the pattern, this quilt pattern works best with small scale prints. So this would be a beautiful pattern to use with tiny little florals that we have all come to recognize in quilting. Big plaid striped not so much. <laughs> Not so much. Could you make it work? Yeah. Would it be a little more work? Yep. And to me, that's what makes it not a great quilt pattern for shirts, unless your shirts happen to not be stripes or plaids or gingham, in which case then it works beautifully. So 
that comes back to the what kind of shirts do you have and what are you looking to accomplish? So I happen to have shirts that have a tiny floral that I could totally use successfully in this quilt pattern. But just generally speaking, I wouldn't say that this quilt pattern is great for shirts, if that makes sense. So before I move on from this topic, I do want to say half square triangles in general, in my experience, with plaids can be really tricky, especially if you like a precise looking block. So we're still talking about the construction of the blocks. This is a um, great quilt pattern. I have a video on it. It's the Quilty Stars by Quilty Love. It does have half square triangles, as you can see, and they do come together with squares, but the design of this quilt pattern is such that each one of these little squares is intended to be different than the half square triangle that touches it. And the half square triangles are not touching each other. So this is a great one for plaids because, and in fact, I did use two different plaids here Actually, I used a ton of different <laughs> fabrics here, all from shirts, by the way, because it's kind of scrappy and because it's not intended to match up to create a single unit, it works. Alternatively, choosing a quilt pattern that has plaids that don't touch each other works as well. And let me show you that. So this is an example of a great quilt pattern for plaids. And I have extolled the virtue of this quilt pattern so many times. It's the Magnolia Quilt Pattern by Chelsea Stratton. And here's why. Each of these plaids, they have angles. There's there. It's actually made as a flip and trim, but it could be made with flying geese or half square triangles. So this is an example of where the plaids don't touch each other. And so even though every block is not exactly the same or even lined up perfectly, it doesn't matter because they're not butting up against each other like that half square triangle with the square that we saw in the melody quilt. And so as a result, it's very obvious that it came the the plaid came from the same shirt and it has a lot of interest and movement, but you don't have that kind of visual jarring of the pieces not coming together perfectly, if that makes sense. If you can imagine had I used this plaid each piece would be cut differently, but again, it would still retain the interest of the shirt and the interest of the block without detracting from either one. Whereas when I held this piece up against the melody blocks, you can just infer it's going to look like, oh, those pieces weren't cut properly. This removes the work. Having a, an excellent quilt block, it doesn't make it any more work. It's just fun to sew and you don't have to worry about plaids matching up, stripes matching up or any of that sort of thing. So I've pulled this back out because it's my final point. And that is one of the things you have to consider is your background fabric. This quilt pattern is amazing and would be so, so great um, and would easily be used with shirts. Now, you'd have to use a lot of them, but you could totally do the background fabric with white shirts. This was actually the very first block and I started with a navy shirt and I made it as a test block and loved it so much that I decided to forge on ahead and make more of them and realized after one other block, I'm going to have to buy some navy yardage because there was no way that I was going to find, I think it's 12 blocks, but could have easily been more, 12 blocks worth of navy shirts that were the same navy. And you can actually tell, maybe, it's kind of hard sometimes on video, this is a shirt, and then I bought the yardage, and that's the border and the sashing. Um, and I think this was a navy shirt, too. These were kind of early on. As I figured out, oh, <laughs> this is too much work with shirts. I bought a ton of navy yardage and I used yardage from that point on. So when you were deciding about your great quilt pattern, the background is, is a consideration as well. Now, I have done lots of 
quilts with white shirts as the background because they're pretty easy for me to find. A lot of times I can find them in very large sizes. And if the pieces are big enough, it's it's not hard to work with them. And I'm kind of used to working with them. But for you, as you're deciding, is this a great quilt pattern or not? If you decide you want to do an unusual background color or just in this case, just a dark background color, you may have to go into it knowing, okay, this is not going to be shirt friendly for the background. The star is made for it, but the background, I had to kind of compromise and use yardage. So that's kind of the final design consideration. In addition to the construction, how the blocks come together, if you're using plaid or striped shirts, is that going to detract from the design? Then there is the, what am I going to do with the background fabric? So if you're really trying to do the entire thing with shirts, that's a consideration as well. So there are quite a few considerations um, about whether something is a great, not good, but great quilt pattern for men's dress shirts. And I've done quite a few of those videos, but I've also made quite a few quilts that I thought were going to be great for shirts and actually weren't. Sometimes you don't know until you get into it, whether the instructions are good, whether it gives pressing directions. So one of the most important decisions that we have to make as quilters is the quilt pattern. And it's a lot of considerations. It's a lot to think about, and it's even more when it comes to having shirts as your quilting fabric, but it's worth it because it makes a beautiful quilt top and one that you can be proud of. So I hope this has been helpful for you to see perhaps some of the things that can impact whether a pattern is great for shirts or just beautiful. I'm Kathy Martin. This is the Catbird Quilts. Thank you so much for watching.